Hello, folks. Welcome. Hi, Matt. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for uh, typing your messages in there. Are you all able to see our poll that we launched? Let me know. I'm curious about how things are working. Hi, Sean. No. Okay. Well, we had a little poll that was just curious about your level of experience in, in Power BI. I do see a couple of votes. We've got people developing Power BI reports. Awesome. Good. Are you all able to see the Q&A? Hi, Bill. You can type Hello. a question during our session. Great. Okay. So it's taking some time to, to sink over. All right. Well, folks, I don't want to take up too much time with uh, uh, Get to Know You. So I'm Rebecca <coughs> Sundquist, and I'm, I'm happy to introduce to you Vicki Wong, who is from the University School. And we're going to be talking to you today about using Power BI's dashboard feature to uh, achieve the goal of putting uh, information at the fingertips of your leadership. They're always asking you for that one number and it typically takes time to get there. Let's use Power BI to put that in there in the palm of their hand. Um, so Vicki, let's go ahead and step into oh, the next slide. Let's okay, ensure that your um, presentation is working. Beautiful. So here we are. <laughs> and <laughs> Vicki, can I turn this on over to you to kick us sure. off? Yep. So here's, here, here's the agenda. A little bit about the background of um, uh, university school and why a comprehensive dashboard for leadership and um, what was accomplished and how are we doing and uh, a conclusion. So um, let me start with something, um, some information about university school. So we are a all boys K-12 school covering two campuses in the suburbs of Cleveland. Um, our school size is 850 students, and um, we are an all black bot school um, from education management to racist edge to financial edge. And we are also a Microsoft school. And finally, our technology department size is um, five. And in my department, which is advancement slash data management, there are only two of us. So our team is pretty slim. slim. And why a comprehensive dashboard? I think um, every so often and on a regular basis, I have many data requests. Um, hey, what's my candidate's, what's the candidate's status comparison? You know, and they want to know five year comparison for this period of time um, from our admissions team. Net tuition status, that's very important for both admissions and the business office. Um, my department always wanted campaign progress, giving analysis, um, annual fund analysis and whatnot. And the payment pledge payment schedule is always, always on top of our business office mind. So, but what if I don't have to run those reports ever again? So that was my, my the problem that I was trying to solve. So a little bit about my power back, power platform journey. So if, if everybody um, works in advancement, they'll know that there is the discontinuation of the Microsoft Office integration with our ENFP. Um, so we started to build um, the gift acknowledgement flows on, in Power Automate in 2022. And then um, last year, we actually built ed an education management flow um, using Sky API and the um, get list call, HTTP get list call. And rolling to this right now, we're, we're, I have built a leadership Power BI dashboard and, um, and reports. So, um, so it's been a, quite a journey. So for everyone who is starting off, it takes time. Um, don't think that you can do everything all at once because I think just to learn each product that um, it, it takes a while to understand your data and then learn the product and then and then build, build the reports that you need. Um, so here's the dashboard overview. So the leadership dashboard, the reason why I actually wrote it, this is this was part of my pitch from the uh, What's Your Data um, 
Award Innovation Grant. So the Leadership Dashboard is a comprehensive Microsoft Power, Power BI dashboard designed to offer high-level key insights into various aspects of the school's performance and operations. The dashboard is intended to provide a clear and concise overview that helps leadership make informed decisions. Each insight is a tile and clicking through to a more detailed power report. And this is where I have to thank Rebecca because she implemented exactly what I asked for. So. Yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, Vicki's presenting here as a winner of our innovation grant last year for the How's Your Data Award. Yeah, yes. And, and this report is actually very responsive, so it works really well on the phone. So, um, so I want to give you, show you what the key insights are that I have um, built or trying to build, and it, uh, it's I am building. Mm -hmm. So there's an admission piece, admission enrollment piece. There is an academic student demographics piece, and a finance piece, and a, an advancement piece. So, so it is um, quite comprehensive. Yeah, and. and um... Yeah. If I if I may go back to that present <laughs> visual just a moment, uh, this is diagramming the fact that there is one landing page for that leadership dashboard. And on that landing page, the leaders see four tiles with their key performance indicators in each of those areas that Vicki mentioned. And then that click through that we mentioned clicks through to a report for each of those. There may be multiple pages on those reports represented on that third line. And we'll come back to this view and talk more about how it all came together. Great. Thank you. So what are the features of the dashboard? It's giving you up-to-date data. Um, we can refresh our data <clears throat> um, up to, I think, eight times a, a day. But, I, I, but for advancement and enrollment data, I chose to refresh it at night. So you will have, uh, we will have nightly up to, you know, nightly um, refresh of the report. Um, the, the dashboard is totally transparent. Um, and what I meant is the fact that um, whenever I refresh the data, I actually am using a um, uh, either CSV file or a um, Excel spreadsheet. And, so, and some of these spreadsheets is being mailed to actually our department, you know, our various department, so that they can verify the data if, if they so, so choose, because um, sometimes auditing and reconciliation is needed. And the third is the data integration. And on the dashboard, or you would not know that the data is coming from multiple places. It not only integrate the various different um, applications, it also aggregates the data for you. Yep. And then it is mobile friendly. We're using Power BI's dashboard feature. So people sometimes get um, use the term dashboard very loosely with Power BI, and they might actually be referring to a Power BI report that is just laid out like a dashboard. But um, we're talking very specifically about Power BI's dashboard feature, which is subsequently very mobile friendly, as reports can be as well. But uh, Vicky will show us in a in, uh, in a moment what um, that looks like on the phone. And uh, then we were going to talk about security and governance and the fact that um, the dashboard security and governance is, uh, can you click on to the next? Mm -hmm. Sorry. And while we're doing that, I'm looking over here because I want to paste something into our chat. The dashboard security and governance is managed the same way as you would manage your reports with a workspace and determining which active directory user groups have access um, permission to view the dashboard or to view reports in that workspace. And um, lastly, we're going to talk about that report navigation, just the fact that you've got one landing page for those leaders to click through to the report that they choose. When they see a value that they need to know more about, they can click through to detail. So Vicky's using um, Microsoft Power Automate, and she's using Premium because she is accessing some of those certified connectors that BlackBud has th for Power Automate to um, use those APIs to access the education management list. And um, you know, potentially in the future, we'll be using the new query API connector when we're when we've got that out and ready to 
run. And so those are helping her manage some power automate flows that access data through API and save it to, um, to a SharePoint as a CSV. She's also got uh, Power BI premium per user uh, licensing right now, but the um, dashboarding that we're going to demonstrate works with Power BI Pro as well. She is using Microsoft SharePoint to store those CSVs and those Blackboard Sky add-ins that I mentioned are um, e leveraged by those uh, custom connectors or certified connectors. Hmm. So, so my biggest challenge, I think, during the whole process, and we, we, Becca has been such a mentor to this whole process, that is the fact that I have to really explore the various methods to figure out which is the best way to get the data. Um, and I will show you in the next few slides. So um, in education management, for it, it's pretty straightforward. You have your Power Automate Premium, with Sky Add-in, and then you can access your data, Blackboard Education Management data, and then you write to your SharePoint, and then and then you can publish it to your Power BI um, service. However, in um, Razor's Edge NXT's case or Razor's Edge case, um, there are several ways. So you can use the Q module um, to um, to get the data or you can use the Power BI connector and you can use the query API. And I'm sure you know there will be a fourth or fifth option coming soon, right? And so let me show you what the Q module looks like. Um, it, you have to schedule, or the way that I worked it, it's there are, I have to schedule one export, one file transfer and one refresh. So from the Q module, you have to schedule the export and send the file to the hosting file services file utility. And then I will use a Power Automate schedule premium flow to schedule the transfer to my SharePoint. And from that point on, I have to use the refresh from the Power Automate um, Power BI service then to, power, to refresh the data in Power BI. Um, so as you can tell, it's complicated, but it works. And then do you want to talk about the connector, Rebecca? Sure. So many of you here uh, have likely heard of the Power BI connector or maybe have it installed yourselves. So the Power BI connector is separate from these certified connectors that we've talked about for accessing education management lists, for example. The Power BI connector is actually open source. That's why it's sitting on GitHub. And it was developed by members of our community and continues to evolve through contributions from our community. So what it allows you to do is store that secret uh, application key or, and your secret subscription key in a, um, and then leverage the API endpoints for Power BI. So um, once you've got that connector installed, you're able to use Power BI Desktop to leverage those connections, pull in the data, and um, it also then subsequently requires, when you get up to Power BI Service, a data gateway and additional details that are all outlined for you on uh, GitHub, which I'll drop that link when I'm done talking here. The thing that folks have you know, run into with trying to leverage that Power BI connector. You know, initially we're, we're very excited because you have a nice layout of how to access that data and it's giving you hands-on access. But then um, there are fields that aren't actually available there because we are using Git list uh, endpoints such as get list of gifts, get list of constituents. And when you're pulling all constituents or all gifts or um, specifically a list itself, um, you're, you're not getting all of the fields there. And so people needed greater access to uh, details. And that's mm -hmm. where we come into the next mm -hmm. option, which is using the, the query API, which will be coming to general release this month. And um, so, yeah. so with the query API, I just can pull the data from Power using Power Automate Premium, and then I can access the query um, from Razor's Edge that you NXT that you've created, and then it can go straight straight to the data go straight to SharePoint, and from SharePoint, you can schedule the refresh to Power BI. So 
it, I do like it this way because there's always an intermediate SharePoint um, file that I can always refer back to. Um, but I, for to me, un, which unfortunately, um, they, I just didn't get all the fields that I I needed, um, and so did the, the power um, the Power BI connector. So mm -hmm. here is what it looks like using the the um, the the various different products. So so Blackboard Sky Add-in to tap into enrollment management and student information systems, and um, for RENXT and FE, FE, I use the Q module with SFTB to, to transfer the file. So um, here's the, the data, and then you have the dashboard and the report. So that's basically the way that um, I'm using it right now, and it could change. So I think once I think Query API, I have more fields available to use. I think that will be my choice. Mm -hmm. So here's the dashboard. So um, Rebecca, do you want to talk about the the, the card visual, the, the technique that sure. you use? Well, yes. So uh, the concept of creating a dashboard in Power BI, and here, let me drop a, a link for an introduction to dashboards, um, is that you're going to pin a tile off of your report. It is possible to pin an entire report as well. But in our case, we just wanted to pin that header level information. And so we're using these multi-card visuals on our reports and then pinning that card to the dashboard itself. So we've got, it, you know, we're showing three here. Um, Vicki mentioned that ultimately she's <coughs> planning to have four of these cards mm -hmm. and um, the leaders can click through on any of these to get to the report that contains that tile. And yep. on the right hand side, or you're going to show us what this looks yes, like on the phone. Absolutely. Now. Um, so you need to download for the Power BI service, you need to download the Power BI app. And from the Power BI app, once we shared the link to the dashboard, you can then, um, one can then just click on the report and the report will show, the, 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 to, to click on the, the tile for the dashboard and the dashboard will show up with my multiple tiles. And um, working with the phone, um, there is a, when you design um, the, um, the tile, I we I adjusted a lot of the size of the font to make it fit in the in the phone, and um, it it took a little while. But I the nice part about Power BI is you can click on the mobile view and you can really see what it looks like on mobile view, and and then work off of adjusting you know the 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 font size, even, you know, the, the, the type to show, to make it so that it display well. Um, it's very convenient because all you need to do is to, you know, two clicks, you can, you can figure out, you know, how the school is doing um, with the, with this leadership dashboard. Okay. So actually, let me, when you click on each tile, sorry, I forgot mm -hmm. that. When you click on each tile on here, in the desktop top view, you actually opens up to a report. But when you're in on the phone wheel view, that's I don't know why I have to do two clicks. Clicks are important. So it opens up the enrollment progress report. So this is what I, I think the top um, multi cart tile is what we pin to to the um, the dashboard. And this is the report that comes with, and this is just one page of the report. Mm -hmm. We have multiple pages and multiple section, uh, multiple pages to the report. So I'm just showing you um, the, the enroll, our enrollment piece and our enrollment report. Um, this is the campaign report. I have to say the campaign report to me um, is a very nice um, report. And I actually style it so that it's very responsive on the phone. I'm sorry, I was, I'm trying to open up my report so I can show you how responsive um, it is. And um, it, it's actually very useful to have a responsive layout. Um, and and um, I like to do more design, designing for the phone so we can 
you know, we can really fully utilize the phone to display our reports. So I'll try to show the my my campaign report once it's loaded. I don't know why okay. it's not loading, but in any case. And so this is our diversity report. Our diversity report, actually, I don't know if you remembered, there were four different items on our diversity. I found that with the phone, the best, best way to show key KPIs is just four numbers. The more you show the prompt, you know, the smaller the fonts is harder for people to read. But when you open up the report, it's actually I showed six different um, um, ethnicity, right? Mm -hmm. And and then and then it and this is the navigation. Um, this is the um, chooser for the for the individual school years, and there are multiple pages. And I can do comparison. I can do I can do a lot of comparison. Um, I've actually done comparison to you know other type by by. Um, by um, school years. So um, here's, a, and then I like to, and I, Rebecca will talk a little bit about what is under the hood about this. Yeah, tile. I think we'll have to go through this part a little bit quick. So I'm going to speed talk here. Um, you do, will one more click give us just that uh, last piece on to show up on this view here? Uh, there we go. Okay. So what you saw on the phone was the first view here with those four. Um, ethnicity summarized, essentially using a hierarchy to just group those uh, six into four. Um, that's what we see on the right-hand side of the screen down at the bottom, the ethnicity, we see those four. And so we, we knew that that was the layout we wanted for our card for mobile, but, and the dashboard, but we wanted six to show up when we actually open the report. So we did a trick here, we layered them. And that's why in that second view where you see the six, we layered on top of that first view. Another view also has a nice black background to this header so it blends in seamlessly. Our end users don't see that funny um, you know, layer of those icons. That's something that's the, in the developer view that helps us win our navigation. Um, so that was just a little trick we had when the thing we wanted to show on the dashboard isn't exactly what we want them to see when they click through, um, but it's related. We needed to use that tile to help with the navigation. Yeah, and this is very helpful. I mean, that's by, by far to make the the um the the results the KPIs responsive to the phone so yeah just a little um, trick and um here is our power automate flow kind of the the structure of it we have um in my um one drive and my that's where I put all my um power power bi files and then I have my power automate which has um the data files and this is um, the workspace. And Rebecca, you want to talk about the like the refresh? Yeah. So we um, well, first of all, we'd mentioned a little bit at the beginning about the workspace being where you control who has access. And so I'm, I'm dropping a link into the chat about workspaces um, for the refresh. Uh, it's possible to schedule that here. And I, I don't know, Vicky, we're, we're a little short on time. So okay. I wasn't sure if there was something else specific. Oh, OK. Yeah, needed yeah, to be yeah. we can there. we can continue. And um, and then I wanted to sh show the SharePoint folder and uh, the where where the data is being um, exported to or pulled into my our leadership folder. So um, what are the challenges that you will find I found in developing this is you know the, all the moving parts that are that I need to coordinate in terms of timing the refresh and timing the um, the power automate um, flows, um, keeping up with consistently with evolving APIs. Um, I'm giving Blackbot a lot of credit for doing that, but um, I every you turn around, there's something better that I can try, right? And managing my own time is also a, quite a challenge. When, once everything is built. So what am I am going to do ongoing is I have already pre-launched to a small leadership group. Um, I'm getting very good feedback and um, I'm asking for, um, they're actually telling me what new other KPIs that I have to build. And what's going to go on is I want to start with the dashboards, 
with the reports that I have, I want to build individual dashboards for our individual departments. Because I think, you know, for sitting in advancement, you know, the most important parts is, oh, how are we doing with endowment, annual fund, and, and how are we doing with the campaign? And pulling, you know, creating a dashboard for that, it's pretty simple and I can do that pretty quickly. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is to creating and to create an in, institution infrastructure where I can put all the data and manage the data in one central location and not in my account. I think that's very important for, for sustainability purposes that you don't want to everything to be set in your account. So um, your next step, um, I think what do you, we, regardless of if you are a school or a nonprofit, what do you think your leadership need to see at the fingertips? Because, hey, you can easily put that on your phone. Um, how can you build a dashboard with the Power BI reports that you already have? Because I know that a lot of the, the presentations, you already have beautiful reports, but what are the KPIs that, hey, that the five numbers or the 10 numbers your leadership would want to see and put it, put it in the dashboard? Because I think it will be um, very exciting for them to be able to carry those numbers on their phones. And, and my, my thinking is try other ways of accessing the data. Which way is the best, the quickest, and the simplest? All right, so um, we do have this whole presentation in the documents for you to download, so be sure to grab that. Uh, before you leave today, it'll have these references for you. We'd invite you to join our Power BI user group if you're not there already. And then we've got um, BlackBuds getting started and API references. Uh, I saw one question come in and it was from Al Elaine and it was more about the scheduling the refresh. And I'm sorry, my brain just did a blank out on <laughs> <laughs> what was I supposed to say on that slide? Ah. <laughs> but we can we can talk about that a little bit more now because I've had some time to catch up. Um, right now, I think that Vicky, you've got several different schedules going. You've got different, yes. a few different flows, um, yep. maybe mm -hmm. in Power Automate. Each of those is on its own schedule. You've got the Q module going, and yep. so the Q is on its own schedule. So uh, the way you've got your data flowing for the Razor's Edge NXT specifically is Q module has a schedule and then Power Automate has a schedule to uh, use the SFTP connector to lift that file and put it in SharePoint. And then Power BI service has a schedule mm -hmm. to run that report uh, and refresh the, the underlying data for that report. And we've talked about editing that um, Power Automate flow that's using SFTP to move the file. We've talked about adding uh, a connector to Power BI service that will also kick off the refresh of the Power BI report in the same Power Automate flow. So many options for how you manage those. Um, schedules are available in Power Automate. Schedules are available in Power BI as well. Uh, any other questions? We're coming into the final seconds. Oh, I want to thank Microsoft and Blackboard for giving me the opportunity, Rebecca, to help me um, with building this dashboard, and Ashley and Heather um, from the Blackboard team, and Emily Waldahl, who's my partner in crime, who I bounce ideas off of, who's at next to my office, and the user group members because they are all inspirations because they have so many samples or so many ways of doing things that um, that I really enjoyed being in the um, the the um, being as a member of the user group. And if then you why have don't any you go ahead and launch that survey while we're here. Oh yeah you can keep talking Vicky I'm sorry. Oh, okay <laughs> but Oh, so if you have any questions, here are our are our, um, our um, emails, and um, you can always drop us a note. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, Vicki, we can hang out for 15 seconds before we get okay. cut off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for those uh, encouraging words. Yeah.
All right, see you backstage. Okay. <laughs>